Okay, g'day everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make, use the um, Refine Edge tool to make a really nice, clear selection of an image. In particular, one that has lots of fine hairs, such as the hair on a person or the hair on an animal. So, in order to do this, you need a picture that's got a reasonably plain background. Uh, so, this is a really good technique to use. So, what I'll do is, I'll just I'll just open a photograph that I've got here. Um, where is it? That's in my downloads. Open there. Let's open this one up here. Okay, so what you'll first need to do is, is you need to use the quick selection tool. Um, make sure it's set to the plus. Um, make my brush a bit bigger with the bracket keys. And let's do a rough selection. Okay, selection doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, just around the hair. Oop, now, if you've got too much, like that, hold the option key. And let's cut it back in. Right, just like this. Um, we'll go a little bit more out on the hair here. Now you see there's all these little fine hairs here, so I'm just going to put my selection up just a little bit there. It's by no means needs to be perfect. Right, okay, once you've got it reasonably to the way that you would like it, go up to this button here and click Select and Mask. It's going to bring this dialogue, this new window up here, sorry. Um, what I'll do is in View, change the view to Overlay. I think that's the best one to see. I'm going to up the trans opacity to 100%. Okay, that just shows you, we're going to create a mask out of this. So that just shows you, what the red area shows you what areas you're going to mask out. Go into edge detection and up the radius to about around two or three pixels. Okay, we don't need to touch anything there. The next one is output settings. Let's do that afterwards. Now, you want to grab this brush here, which is the refine edge brush, and let's make it bigger. And what you want to do is you just kind of want to paint around the areas that have those fine hairs. Now see how I've got a tiny bit of grey just here, I'm just going to go in a little bit. You don't want to have red going into a hair. See that spot there? That's not going to mask you out properly, so I'm going to undo that. So you kind of want to remove the grey bits, as you, which are part of the, of the background, but um, not go too far into the hair. Now I'm going to do this quickly for the sake of this video, and you guys can do a better job than me when you get to it. Now you only use this on the hair, okay? So whether you're doing a model, a person, or an animal, just on the hair, you don't have to. You don't use this tool around the edges of the um, of the, her body, okay? There's a little bit of grey there. I might get rid of here, okay? A little bit of colour there. All right, I'm not going to get too carried away. You guys can do, like I said, a better job than me. Now. Over down here, what you want to do is you want to select decontaminate colors and then output to a new layer with layer mask. All right, it should default to that once you select decontaminate colors. If you choose remember settings, which I'm not going to do, you can select that, then you can go back into this screen and you can re you can pick up where you left off. Okay, but I'm just going to leave that off. Click OK. All right, and there we go. Now, if I, if I get a new layer. I'm just going to click down to the background there and I'm just going to fill it with, just, I'll just fill it with blue for example. And then you can see that, especially in particularly up the top here, you can see all those fine hairs have come back. So that's a really nice way to use a selection tool to create a fine selection where you've got lots of little fine detailed hairs, things like that. So what I might do is I might just put it on a different background as well. So I'll just go to my desktop and these clouds. This is just for the example. Um, okay, I'm going to get the move tool, move this over, put it on here. Command T with my free transform. I'm going to just up it all the way over here. And there you go, then you can see she can be on a plain background or you can put it on any background. It looks quite good. There's a few spots that aren't great because I rushed, but you, but that's okay. Um, the next thing, what you can do with this is, I'm going to save this. 
And just as a PSD, I'm just going to save it to my desktop for the sake of this video. And okay. Now, nice thing you can do is with this selected, I can go over to Adobe InDesign now. I'm just going to create a new print document. And I'm going to draw out a a frame frame tool frame box text frame uh, picture frame box sorry and I'm going to get file and place and you guys will be able to do this for your magazine covers and I saved it to my desktop Adobe programs work really nice together I can just drop this Photoshop document this PSD or place it straight into Adobe InDesign all right just like that. Okay, now the good thing about this is, say for example, I've got my document open in Photoshop and I make a change, okay? I don't want these layers. I'm going to throw them, I'm just going to select them and press delete. And, well, oh, actually, no, I might keep that layer there. All right, now if I go back to in, and, I'm, and I've got to save, make sure you save that. Now what I can do is, I can go back to Adobe InDesign. Even though there's a little icon up here, modified, click to update. So that's saying that the original Photoshop file that I've got, I've modified it, and if I click this button, it's gonna automatically update it for me. So I can flick back between Photoshop, do a little bit of work here, go back to InDesign, and just click that button there, or you can go into Links, and you'll have the same button that you can press there to update the work that you've done. So that's a really nice workflow between Adobe Photoshop and InDesign. It also works with Illustrator as well. Okay, thank you.